Hi folks! In this video I'm going to be making one of these iPad pillows or tablet pillows. I think they're super fun, easy to make, and they make great gifts. I'll share the design space file that I created in my sewing group, Stitch It with Cricut. And if you'd like to see how I assemble this, keep watching. So before we get started sewing, I just wanted to review what you're going to have in the cut file. You're going to have one large piece and one large cut that is 11 and a half by 18. If you don't have the maker and you're cutting by hand, you can cut up to 12 by 18 for this project. 12 or 11 and a half won't make a difference in the finish. I'm using a plain cotton. Um, it's from the High Adventure 2 pack from Cricut. And because it's just cotton, I fused heavy fusible interfacing to the back of it to give it more body. You want your finished product to have more structure, so the heavy interfacing helps. You can also use a laminate fabric or a heavier fabric if you, if you want to. Um, you have one piece two by three that you're going to press towards the middle. We're going to be sewing a seam along each side a quarter inch and that is how we make our tab for the top for lifting. Let's keep this here for a sec. You have one piece two by ten. Again you're going to press it towards the middle in half towards the middle but you're not going to sew right away this is the piece that goes along the front behind this cording so this is the piece that goes along the front you don't sew it in advance because you will be sewing it down on both sides and then you have one piece three by ten I didn't have any large cording and I'm 35 kilometers away from a fabric store so what I did do, even on this one, this is the same thing I did here, was I took the smaller cording that I had and I just used some spray basting to attach batting to it to make it large enough for this project. And this is going to go in the middle and will fold over. If you have the fusible cording, at this point you'll press it onto this fabric. If you don't, I just will use some spray basting again and fold this over. We don't sew it down because we're going to sew it as we install it. So that's all we need to know to get started. So let's put that aside. The first thing we want to do is fold on the 18 so that your project is about 9 inches wide by 12 inches or 11 and a half inches long, whichever you're using. I'm just going to pin this to keep it in place, but if you're used to working without pins, that's fine too. And we're just going to sew a quarter inch straight along this side. Okay, so I've backstitched at both ends just to make sure it doesn't come apart, and I sewed in a red thread so that you could see it. The next thing we're going to do is sew across the top. But you want to leave a space because this is actually going to end up being the back. So you want to leave a space open wide enough to add your filler, whether you're using rice or beans or whatever it is. So the original project that I saw called for about a two inch space. But I found that was a bit tight when you're trying to add your filler. So I'm going to leave mine a little wider. There we go. Maybe we'll leave it about three inches, something like that. So I have more space. That'll be good. So we're going to sew straight out and straight out. Don't forget to back stitch because you don't want to have your seams pull apart when you're turning it right side out or when you're filling. There we go. I have a 
thread here. I'm just going to take that away. There's another one. Okay. So we have our opening for our filler. So what we're going to do now is create our angle that we have on the bottom and on the top. So we're going to open our project. We're going to open the corners. So you want to make sure that on both ends your corners are facing, your seam allowance is facing in the same direction. If you twist them, it's going to get awkward when you're trying to sew it together. So you want to open like this. Make sure your seam is in the center. You can even throw a pin in it to make sure it doesn't move. There we go. And you want to create your points. Let's line them up and make sure they're nice and straight, equal on both ends. That looks good. Okay, so we're going to trim these. We're going to trim them off at about three quarters of an inch. So I'm just lining it up on my cutting mat at three quarter inch. And I'm just going to cut straight across, turn it over, and we're going to do the same thing on this side, three quarter inch, and cut across. There we go. So, before we go any farther, I'm going to run a seam along both and both sides both long sides of this no need to close the ends they are going to be sewn into the into the gusset okay so we have our little tab sewn on both sides i'm using red on red on this so i don't think you can see it maybe there okay so you're going to fold your tab in half and you're going to place it on the side where you have no seam, not on the back, on the front. You're going to put the good side down into the hole on the top, line it up nice and straight and try to center it. That looks pretty centered. I'm just going to clip it there for now and we're going to be doing a quarter inch seam right along this top. Flip it over, make sure your seams are lined up. I'm going to sew straight along, about a quarter inch along here. There we go. This is your opening for your filler. Don't sew over that. So a quarter inch and a quarter inch. Okay, so I'm going to remove this pin and we're ready to turn our project right side out. You want to push those corners out that you just sewed so you get that nice gusset shape. There we go, push that out all the way. And you see how the, ta the tab is at the top, so you know that's your top. Your bottom, you have the opening for your filler. This is going to be sewn by hand at the end once you've filled it. So we're going to get our seam lined up in the middle. We want to make sure that it's nice in the middle. You can even press that open might be a good idea so it's flatter. Okay, now you're going to take the two inch that you have pressed in place 
You've pressed both sides towards the middle. You're going to line it up about three inches from, or three and a half, let's say, from the bottom towards the middle. We're just going to fold our end in nice and straight. And I'm going to use a clip to hold it in place. And we do the same thing on the other side. Make sure it's straight. We'll fold the end under again. Make sure that's nice and straight. Whoops. I need to fold just a little more. We'll make sure that's nice and straight. That looks good, I think. All lined up. And I'll clip on this side too. And we're going to sew straight along both edges of this band. Okay, so you can see where I've added this band along the front. I've sewn along both sides of it. You can sew down the ends if you want to, but it's really not necessary. I didn't. And what I've done is put my fake cording inside of this 3 by 10 piece, and I've just used spray basting to hold it in place. I'm going to fold down on this end and fold in. And I'm just going to stick a clip on it for now. And I'll do the same thing, kind of mitering the corner. So I'll fold down and fold in again. And we'll put a clip on this end. Okay, so what you want to do now is turn it over. You want to sit this cording on this band so that this is where it's going to go so that it holds your iPad in place when you stand it up. We're just going to loosen this clip and clip down and do the same thing on this side. You don't have to worry about the gap. Just make sure that your cording is centered. Pull it over that way a little more. There we go, that should do it. And now we're going to take this end. I flattened out my seam on the inside. We're going to take this end and we're going to fold up. And we're going to fold up again. We'll lift our clip and clip this whole thing in place. Do the same thing on this end. Lift our clip and clip everything in place. sure that's in and clip this in place. So what you're going to do now is sew straight along this edge on this folded part and that's going to sew right through and keep your cording in place. You'll want to use a zipper foot so that you have space to butt up against this cording. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so our cording is sewn in place. It's held in by the sewing that we've done along this edge. I've sewn along both sides to give it a better finish. And now we're going to fill. So we're going to use the opening in the back to fill. I'm going to use rice to fill mine. Some people are using 
uh, dry beans, you can use uh, glass beads or plastic beads. You just want to make sure that it's something heavy enough. You need the weight to hold it in place when you put your iPad or iPhone on it. I'm going to fill from the back. I'm going to use rice and I'm going to use loose batting. So I'll be ba right back to show you how to finish up your project. And we're ready to finish. I've put about four cups of rice in this. It's quite, they are quite large when they're finished. So I've used about four cups of rice and I'm just going to finish up filling it with this polyfill. It's loose polyfill. You just tear pieces and stuff it in. We have the opening in the back. And we'll just use the polyfill without spilling too much rice. We'll just finish filling it up by stuffing it. Get it all up nice into the corners and everywhere. There we go, that's looking good. A little more. there which is one more I think to fill it really nice I think that's good that looks good okay so that's all there is to it now I'm going to take my thread and needle and I'm going to sew up the back Nice tight stitches so none of the rice will spill out. And that's all there is to it. You have your iPad or tablet pillow, whatever you'd like to call it. And it's all done. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you'll make some of these. Please post pictures if you do. Please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you for watching.